completed your first year. So you don't have any grades for your employers to go by. Um, so you wind up interviewing for your job, your second year of law school, and they look at your first year grades. So those first year grades are really important. It's very high stress in school. Everybody wants to be in the top 10%, but we all know that mathematically 90% of you won't be in the top 10%. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the bigger firms really only take people from the top 10% of their class, especially if you didn't go to a T14 law school. What is a T14 law school? You say, well, just do a search for it. It's top 14 law school. And sometimes there are law schools that kind of move into and out of the top 14. But if you think about um, the best law schools, it, it's going to be your Harvard's, your Stanford's, your Yale's. Um, yeah. You know, your NYU, University. Columbia, University right. of Michigan. Yeah. When University you go to Chicago, one of those law schools. UPenn. Um, yeah. When you go to one of those law schools, you, you tend to have an easier time finding a job with the bigger firms. And the bigger firms will pay more money. So if you carry on a lot of debt in law school, you know, you want to find a, a job that's going to be able to pay that off. And the bigger firms tend to just pay more money. Um, if you go to any of these big firms, Kirkland Ellis, King and Spalding, and you just look through those attorneys, uh, they're all attorneys that are on law review or the COIF, meaning, you know, they, they were most likely in the top 10% of their class. And they usually wind up going to, uh, they either wind up going to really good schools or they wind up doing really, really well in law school. So that first year is pretty important. You want to get a good jump on that. Um, and I would also say, do your best to kind of network, you know, networking can only get you so far because these law firms, the bigger ones, um, and this is why your profile is on those big firms websites. Um, it's to let the clients know that, Hey, we got some high powered, really well educated people who did really, really well in school. Okay. So it's a marketing thing. So, uh, at some point you can, you can still get a job at a big firm if you've built up enough business. Okay. So in, in law, it's all about clients and whether you have clients and you can actually move over to a bigger firm. But a lot of times I say, why would you want to do that? If you have your own clients, you're at a smaller firm, you're probably making more money and you're probably not paying as much rent and you have a lot more freedom and flexibility. So why would you even go to law mm -hmm. firm? But some people are just stuck in that law firm environment. They just want to move from big firm to big firm. And it's all about mm -hmm. having the clients and the people that will follow them to these these uh, big firms. Yeah. Uh, and Serena also asked, you know, is it hard to get jobs in house compared to law firms? And I mean, I tend to agree, right? Because there are even fewer jobs available. Yes. In -house, in, -house, in house jobs are, they're kind of at a premium. Um, you know, for every in house job that's out there, every time I look, there's at least 10 attorneys applying for it, 10 people applying for it. I was told for the job I got at Bell South that there were 50 applicants for that. Um, you know, luckily I practiced with some of the people that worked there when I was at a law firm. So I, I went to college with one of the attorneys there. And I also practiced the law firm with one of the other attorneys. Um, so they basically were very comfortable with me. They knew what I was capable of, knew what I could do, had a good reputation in the community. And, and really that's important. You don't really want to burn any bridges. Um, you know, every job that I've ever had has, I've, I've had some kind of a link with somebody who's there. You know, so the connections are really, really important. Um, Very true. Yeah, and I'm I'm so glad you mentioned the whole prestige aspect because sometimes people have gotten upset with me in previous live streams and videos where I mentioned that you know that you're not even going to get a chance, pretty much, of getting these really yeah, high paying it, it, law corporate jobs if you don't yes. go to the right law schools or you're not at the top of the class. It's it's very unfortunate. But that's just the way business works. Um, these law firms really, really try to get the biggest cases that pay out the most money, the most in dispute, $200 million cases. I worked on a $200 million case, wow. um, you know, and they want to be able to convey to the client that we have, mm -hmm. you know, people with really good credentials working on it. And unfortunately, that's just kind of how it works. Now, myself personally, I believe there are a lot of people out there who didn't go to the top tier law schools that are very capable and confident. And I'd say, I'd say most people are that way because you're still learning the same law. You're still learning um, the law. And, you know, the best, some of the best lawyers I know didn't go to one of these top, top schools. I, I didn't go to one of those top schools, you know, I, I went to Emory. That's not a top 14 school, um, you know, and if you graduate from Emory, you kind of need to be in that top 10% coming out. Um, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of how it is. And, and I'll add one more thing, which is that um, 
the in-house jobs, the companies, they tend to hire mostly from the big law firms. Why is that, you say? Why do they do that? Well, first of all, they, they hire usually when you're about five or so, three to five years um, into your practice. First of all, it's cheaper to get people that are attorneys that aren't partners and longtime partners, although some firms will actually do that um, and pay them a lot of money. Um, but they tend to get uh, people that are third to fifth year associates, sometimes fifth to seventh year associates. Okay. And they, they do that one because they, they do want people that could do the job, but still are not that, but are still, you know, cost effective, so to speak. Um, but a lot of the attorneys who are in house, especially at the bigger companies, they are actually going to be dealing with working with and managing um, attorneys that work for the big firms, especially on these big cases. And, and for them to be able to manage these firms, they have to have, well, I wouldn't say have to have, but it gives them better perspective actually having worked for those firms and mm -hmm. understanding how those firms work, how they operate, where the billing costs come from. You know, uh, and one of the companies I was at, we actually hired a guy straight out of law school and the guy literally just, everything was over his head. He was always getting our outside counsel about this cost or that cost. And I, I always had to explain to them, look, man, you've never worked in that environment. You don't understand that, you know, when the law firm does this, this is how they do it. This is where these costs are coming from. He could just really never get that. Um, you know, so if I literally had to hire anybody again, if I was in house that had to work on these million hour cases or any of my cases, I wouldn't hire anybody from straight out of law school unless they had some, some fantastic experience working, you know, in their prior life, either as a paralegal or a secretary for a big firm. Um, I would do the same thing. I would go with that criteria. I would, I would literally hire people, uh, from a law firm, um, and not necessarily the biggest and baddest, but certainly um, people with law firm experience before going in house. Okay. Um, so that's kind of my, my perspective on, on that.